Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Today's flavor is chocolate raspberry. It's going to be 48 degrees today. And it's looking kind of a little overcast, not too bad. So I have a lot I'd like to get done today. This is starting a busy season for me with the gardening because I tend to let the house go and then I have to play catch up on that. So, I need to clean the house. I need to do some more prep. I need to clean the yard. <laughs> the list is endless today. And I know I won't get all that done. So, I'll just pick one or two things and call that good. So, a lot of times I do these things to myself. I spent quite a lot of time designing my garden, which was actually fun for me. So, it's always more fun to do those things we like to do than those things we don't like to do. One of my least favorite things is cleaning. I know a lot of people love to clean. I know my mom's one of those people. She loves to clean, but not me. <laughs> it was never my favorite thing to do. I do what I have to do, and that's it. I wish I liked to clean, but I don't. To me, it's a thankless task. A few days later, and it's all the same again. The dust is back. The hair is back. It's all the same. But I do love to to declutter and organize. So that's a good thing, at least for me. All right. I have to check and see how many creamers I have left. I think we're coming down to the end and I'll have to next month get some st a stash of new ones. I usually get at least four and then that lasts me a couple months. Because sometimes the Walmart creamer is hard to come by. They're sold out. So I'll have to see. But I would like to wait until March to do that because this creamer will last me a couple weeks. All right, let's have a taste of our delicious coffee. Cheers. Oh, nice and hot. Very good. And that coffee came my, from my friend Kathy. Thank you again, Kathy. You make my mornings more pleasant with the raspberry coffee. So I'm hoping I can get outside and clean up the yard before it rains. But we'll see. I need to kind of chill a little bit first before I get out there and it's really cold out there. I like to go out like later in the day when it warms up. So 48 shouldn't be too bad. Maybe I can even squeeze in a walk. We'll have to wait and see. All right, I'm going to take a look at my budget book and see what I want to do first today. Okay, another green check for yesterday. That makes me happy. Another good thing that keeps uh, me, um, this method of me tracking my spending and not spending, is it keeps me off of Amazon because there's been many times where I thought, oh, I should get this or I should get that. And it's usually things I need. I don't buy a lot of frivolous things on Amazon um, but you know there's seeds I'd like to get or some gardening thing or like the kitchen composter um, so I get useful things usually on Amazon but they add up just like frivolous things do so uh, there's been many days this month where I thought oh I'm going to, you know, buy this or that, and then some, some of the things I put into my save for later, 
Uh, I usually leave them in my cart for a couple days unless it's a really really good sale because I've already lost out on um, a couple of sale items where you know the sale it went off sale so those things I usually like to go ahead and purchase as soon as possible but if it's something that's just uh, you know something I want um, I'll leave it in my cart and make that decision a few days later uh, and then I'll tell myself if you buy it you don't get a green check mark you know it's like when you were in school and you used to get those little gold and silver stars I guess we still well at least I'm still motivated by that so anyway um, that's another reason why I like to keep track of the days where I spend and don't spend. Uh, like I said, this isn't about how much money I spend. It's cutting back on random buying, um, which I used to be really good at. All right, well, I will uh, show you my sourdough starter now. I'm excited about it. All right, be back in a minute. I have a reminder set. Today is day three of sourdough starter. So I was pretty excited when I looked at this this morning. Uh, I put a rubber band around here, which I suggest that you do too, last night or yesterday morning. Um, and it's already becoming active. It went all the way up to here at some point, and now it's down here. But um, this is how you can measure if your starter is becoming active and it's got a lot of bubbles going I don't know if you can see that but it's time to feed it it doesn't smell sour yet so I'm going to add another um, um, quarter cup of flour and another quarter cup of water. Okay, here goes the quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water. Now I think if I recall after day three if your starter becomes active like mine is, now that's pretty quick. Don't be discouraged if yours takes longer. It has a lot to do with your temperature, um, all kinds of different things. But make sure you incorporate the flour well. And um, I think after the third day, once it becomes active, you have to start discarding half of it. Um, I have to I have to check on that because um, I haven't made this in quite a while. It's probably been a good couple years. So uh, that's all I'm going to do with it today. And um, this is nowhere near ready to bake with. So you know, don't get overly enthusiastic about that. It's going to take a few more days. And it can take anywhere from, you know, five to ten days, depending. But I'm very happy with this. It's doing very well. And I'm just going to carry on with it. So what I want to do now is raise up my rubber band. And another thing I want to do is put this on a plate. Because I've had starters before. They got so active, they just kind of shot out over the, um, the container. Okay, so there it is, and we'll see how, how it does. Now, if this is very active, this, this could start, you know, foaming up by tonight. So, back with my lid and you don't want it on there tight because you want the wild yeast to go into it. Okay and use filtered water. Now I'm just using regular flour. You can use um, 
rye flour. A lot of people use rye flour. You can use wheat flour. But I'm just using regular flour. Okay, so day three. Success. Okay, time for the yogurt. Now this has been in the refrigerator a couple days and you can see how thick it is. Beautiful thick yogurt. So using the uh, Dollar Tree shelf stable milk did work but I want to drain this so here I have a double mesh and I also have a coffee filter so I want to make it even thicker so <clears throat> I'm just going to put the yogurt in here and let it sit and drain but this is pretty thick just the way it is. Now this is whole milk. Um, I actually prefer soy milk yogurt. I, I like the flavor of it a little better. But yeah, this turned out awesome. Really nice and thick and I make it in the Instant Pot. And my Instant Pot, I had it in there for eight hours. So, you know, it really didn't take that long. And I have a lot of yogurt here. So uh, I'm going to let this drain. There isn't a whole lot of liquid, which I'm surprised about. There's a little bit, but not much. So I'm going to just cover this so if there are any bugs flying around, and it's already starting to drain, you can see that. So, and you can make yogurt cheese out of this, or, you know, I don't have any cream cheese right now. So, I'm probably going to take a little bit of this and mix it with some ranch dressing and uh, use it on my, I have two slices of marble rye left, and you know how much I like it with cucumbers and ranch dressing. So, I'm going to take a little of this and make some because... Um, I'm out of um, cream cheese. All right, so that's my yogurt project. So for $1.25, I got quite a bit of yogurt. And then I can reuse this yogurt to make new yogurt. So, um, and when I make my soy yogurt, it's, it's a hybrid, really. Um, I make a... a I start out with whatever yogurt, plain yogurt I have, whether it's dairy or, um, you know, the, the problem is if you buy, if you buy a plain, like coconut milk or soy yogurt or any of those things, they have a lot of preservatives in them. So my first few batches of soy yogurt I started with uh, probiotic capsules and that worked out really well but after a while too you know your your yogurt will get old um, I don't know how many batches I can make with this but it, it starts to get a funny taste and a funny texture you'll you'll know when you need a fresh batch of yogurt and then I just buy a container of yogurt with just plain yogurt the uh, the simplest one I can find without a lot of thickeners or anything like that in there now this with the shelf stable milk it does have um, you know things in it to make it shelf stable but um, you can use any milk you know use regular dairy milk or whatever you have. You can use low fat milk, but this is the full fat. It was full fat yogurt as well. And I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Let me give this a taste. Okay, like I said, I fermented this for eight hours and um, I did taste it when it first came out. So I'm going to taste it again. But the longer you let it ferment in your pot, the more tangy it gets. I don't like my yogurt real tangy. Um, so let me give this a try. And, you know, just look how thick that is. That's beautiful. 
that's the perfect amount of tang for me. So I wouldn't want it any tangier. Then what I do, I can eat it plain or I can add a sweetener to it and some cinnamon and vanilla or sometimes I add jelly to it. If I have um, a chia freezer jam, which I'm out of, um, I'll put that in with it. You can put a banana in it. Um, you can make um, applesauce and put that in. Whatever you want to flavor it with. That's why I like this kind of yogurt and I'm not paying over a dollar for a little tiny container of yogurt. Alright, so there's my yogurt for today. And sometime coming up, I haven't made kombucha in a long time. And I do have some scobies in a hotel that I haven't really fed in a very, very long time. So I don't know if they're still viable. Uh, they aren't moldy or anything, so I'm going to try those out. Worst case scenario, I'll be out a cup of sugar and uh, eight tea bags. So I want to make some kombucha coming up uh, the next in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. All right, okay, I will be project. Back. I've been talking about my apples now for three days. And I want to make, there's, there's a recipe for uh, an apple cake that I'd like to try. And also, I want to make a little bit of applesauce to go with my yogurt. So I have, I, I like cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon in my applesauce. I'm not a big fan of just eating applesauce. I don't know why, but I do like it for cooking. So I have this Kirkland cinnamon. And I also have this Whole Earth Erythritol. Yeah. Anyway, you use, <coughs> to one cup of sugar, you need a cup and a half of this. Well, anyway, I don't want to put sugar in my applesauce, and I want to use this up. Sometimes I buy things like this just to try it. And usually I use um, a different sweetener, but um, I definitely want to use this up, because... Stuff like this is expensive. I, I think I got that at Walmart quite a while ago. So I'm just going to cut up my apples. I'm going to cook them down. And uh, then uh, I'll let it cool. And I'll eat that with some yogurt maybe tomorrow. So, all right. Another money-saving project. We can do this, we can save money, and then we can buy the things that we really, really want. Oh, and the apples I got uh, from Flash Foods. So they were cheap. They were marked down. But they're getting to the point where I either have to eat them, and I will save a couple to eat, but they need to be used up. Well, I'm going to make this applesauce now. I cut up my apples. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of this erythritol because there's not that much applesauce. So that, and then I'm going to put, oh, like three quarters of a tablespoon of cinnamon. So that's going to be very cinnamony but I like it that way. So okay, I'm going to let that cook until all the apples are soft and I'm going to mash it up and stick it in the fridge and probably eat it with my yogurt. This morning's breakfast is some of the this Aldi's cheese. You guys know this is my favorite. My favorites. It's got the extra sharp white cheddar, Havarti, Gouda, and Asiago cheese. And I still have some of that left, so I don't need to go to Aldi's and get more. So here's my breakfast. I had a piece of bread, a sourdough, that fell apart. So I toasted that, half a ciabatta, and uh, a blood orange. I also had an apple 
and earlier this morning I had a banana. So that's breakfast for today. My applesauce is still bubbling away. And uh, it should be done pretty soon. Okay. Okay, that's I just breakfast. made some yogurt cream cheese. So let's take a look at it. That looks good. It didn't make a whole lot because I didn't put a whole lot of liquid in there. Um, so let me give this a try. And I need to put it in a container. All right, well, I didn't have any cream cheese, and I wasn't going to go to the store and buy any. So I made some out of yogurt. And I've seen a lot of different tutorials on this, where you can uh, buy yogurt and make it, but why buy it when you make your own yogurt? So it's nice and firm. Some people, they, they put it in a blender. They'll do it with whipped cream, all kinds of different ways. But I'm just going to leave this like this because what I want to do is mix this with some of my um, ranch dressing. And as you can see, it looks really good. So, and then I'm going to put it on a sandwich with my cucumber. So, here's my ranch powder, and you can buy this, I think this Tuscan Garden, I got this at Aldi's. So, but this, this was stuff I had from McCormick, and then I put some of the Aldi's in with it, so it's, it's a mixture of different ranch dressings. So what I'm going to do is add some to my cream cheese. And this is to taste however salty you like it. So I'm going to add a little bit at a time, mix it up. and see how much salt you like. Now you can do this with plain salt too. You don't have to make it with the ranch, but that's how I like it. So that will be tasty with my cucumbers because I do have cucumbers and I do have a couple more pieces of um, marble rye. So this should last about a week in the fridge. And I just took a little bit of the homemade yogurt that I made. I still have a little bit left, but I'm just going to add that to my yogurt container. And I can always make more cream cheese out of it. Now technically this is a yogurt cheese. If you want it creamier, put it in your blender and blend it for a little bit. But I'm going to give this a taste. Mmm, that's good. You can use just a little bit more. That is really good. So if you make your homemade yogurt, you can make yourself some yogurt cream cheese too. And of course, when this sits in the fridge, it's going to the, the flavor is going to develop even more. So there we have it. Homemade yogurt, homemade cream cheese. Another taste. Mmm. That's good. All right, so that'll firm up even more when I put it in the fridge. And I'm going to drain the rest of my yogurt and put it in my yogurt pot. Another thing I did today, I had a, um, oh, what do you call them? A pomegranate sitting here for a couple
couple weeks anyway, longer than that. So I got all these pomegranate seeds out of it, but I tasted them, and the flavor is good, but they have big seeds inside. I don't buy pomegranates. It came in, t in a flash food box. So if you guys have any idea what to do with these, <laughs> leave it in the comment below because I have no clue. I know some people, I've seen them put them in salads and things, but it's it's... I don't like this chewing on the seeds. And it's 5 o'clock. I did this at 10 o'clock this morning. And look how much my starter has grown. This is really, really looking nice. There we go. Now, like I said, this is not anywhere near ready. Um, I'll feed that again at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, probably remove half of it. So let me know what to do with these pomegranate. Make your own yogurt. Make your own cream cheese. It's so easy. So I'm going to have some dinner now. And what I'm going to have is my... Um, going to finish up the salad, which I didn't do the other day. I was going to. That'll be the last of my Costco salad. Um, and then I still have some pasta in the fridge that I made, uh, not yesterday, but the day before when I made the um, um, stroganoff with the mushrooms and the seitan. So I have enough for at least two more servings of that. So that's what I'm having for dinner. And that's it. A very full day of making things and saving money. And uh, I, it, I think it's fun. I, I like doing all these different things. All right. I'm going to make my dinner and then I'll be back to wrap things up. All right. Up. Well, here's my dinner for this evening. Stroganoff with egg noodles uh, seitan and mushrooms and just a very simple salad that's the last of the Costco salad so I ate that whole big tub and it was delicious and I didn't throw any of it away because I repackaged it so okay I'm going to eat my dinner and I'll be back okay dinner was good and it was quick just eating what I already had in the fridge so every couple days I usually cook some meals and that seems to last me. So I have enough left to, um, oh excuse me, I literally just finished eating. So I have enough um, of the uh, seitan and mushroom with gravy I'm going to freeze. I don't want to eat it again for a third meal. Um, I'll enjoy it down the road because it was really good. I don't know how well it'll freeze, but I'm going to try it. So today I <clears throat> saved a lot of money. And my good friend, Creative Lori, over at her channel, go check her out. She likes to save money too. And for the last couple weeks, she's been doing a post of um, what she did every day and what she did to save money. So I thought that was a really awesome idea. And so if I save money in a day or so, I'm going to do something similar. So what did I do today to save money? Well, I've did the homemade yogurt made from a dollar twenty-five shelf stable full fat milk from Dollar Tree. So I did that. Uh, and from that I made Greek yogurt and I also made some um, ranch cream cheese. So I'll enjoy that with my um, rye bread and cucumbers. Um, I made uh, applesauce from Flash Food Markdown Apples 
that uh, really needed to be done and I figured I could eat the applesauce in my yogurt and that would be delicious. So I did that and um, I'm making my uh, sourdough starter which I'm really thrilled with. It's doing great. I, I've never had one start that fast but it's bubbling away and uh, hopefully it'll be done by day five so that maybe I can bake a loaf of bread because sourdough bread, the good stuff, is around four dollars and up. So if I can make my own, I mean <clears throat> it's made with very little flour and water, the starter is, and then of course like three or four cups of flour and uh, I can either make it in my bread machine or I can make it in my um, um, clay baker or I could also make it in my um, cast iron pot. So I have several choices of what I can do and I can save myself at least three dollars if not more because I can't see where a loaf of homemade sourdough would cost um, much more than a dollar. So um, I saved quite a bit of money today. I'm collecting my garbage. I'm putting it in my uh, composter which I think will pay for itself um, after a while because now I don't think I need to buy compost anymore. So I don't have to drag those heavy 40 pound bags home and get my car all dirty with them. So even though I did spend money on that, I did save a hundred dollars off the cost of it because it had a coupon. So I saved money that way. So I can't think of any other ways that I saved money. It's been raining here all day. I never got outside. Um, it's just been icky. It's not like freezing cold, but um, it was just too nasty to go out. I didn't go for my walk. Uh, I didn't go in the backyard and do anything. So uh, that was my day. It was busy. I really enjoy doing these things. I'm very rarely ever bored. Sometimes I get bored with things that I have to do and I don't feel like doing because I find the whole task boring. But I never sit around and go, oh, I have nothing to do. So if, if you find yourself doing that, um, get yourself a hobby. Look into different hobbies, things that you might love doing. Oh, there's so many. The, the list is endless. Of hobbies that you can do and that you can enjoy doing and alleviate some boredom especially if you're uh, a retired person or a person that's home a lot by yourself because you can't ask your family to come and entertain you all the time that's just not fair to them um, because they have their things that they want to do too so we all need to entertain ourselves, keep ourselves happy, and um, give that a try if you're chronically bored. So okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.